Americium is really a very radioactive element, so it is handled in this glove box, and I'm not qualified to use such equipment, so Mark, who works here, will tell us about it. So this is a, this is a vial of americium-241, which is one of the isotopes of americium, and this was separated from some plutonium because one of the isotopes of plutonium, plutonium-241, decays into americium-241 with a half-life of 14 years. It turns out you can make americium a, a number of ways. It's generated when nuclear weapons are detonated. It's also found uh, in spent nuclear waste from nuclear reactors. So, for example, uh, if you took a tonne of material that had been used in a nuclear reactor and took it to one side, there'd be about 100 grams in that tonne would be americium. This is actually ultraviolet visible spectroscopy cell and it goes into this holder which has two fibre optic connections to it and what happens is we pass light from the spectrometer through these fibre optic cables through the solution and out the other side and the spectrometer provides a fingerprint of what element is in that solution and that fingerprint is very specific to americium. Americium is the only transuranium element that you're likely to have a sample of in your house. In fact you may have several samples because americium is used in very small quantities, nanograms, one thousandth of a millionth of a gram in smoke detectors that we all have in our houses to prevent us being burnt to death if there's a fire. <laughs> they were meant to put it off. Hi. You forgot to switch it off. I've actually uh, got uh, Martin Polyakov's uh, old smoke detector. You haven't taken a working yeah. one from his house? We haven't taken the working one, no, that wouldn't be safe, but we took one that stopped working. This is the inside of the smoke detector, and you can see here it actually says americium. Well, americium is a strong emitter of gamma rays and alpha particles, and these are used in a smoke detector because if you get particles of smoke, the sort of stuff that makes smoke look white. Um, they intercept the radiation and stop the radiation getting from the radioactive source to the detector in your smoke detector. So in fact, what's measuring is a drop in the current going between the source and the detector and the alarm goes off. And it says that there's 0.9 microcuries. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't normally remember what 0.9 microcuries really means. It means there's 0.26 micrograms and you might sit there and think what on earth does he mean by that? Well if you think of a grain of rice it weighs a hundred thousand times less than the grain of rice. It's got quite a history to it as well. It was first discovered in 1944 but this was kept secret for a whole year until it was eventually allowed out into the public domain. And the reason it was kept secret is because it was part of the Manhattan Project when there was all the research to generate nuclear weapons. So people didn't want competitor groups to understand how far ahead they were compared to the competition. So they kept the discovery of an entire element in the periodic table secret for a whole year. Uh, but then it was leaked out uh, and then the, basically they had to tell everybody. In nuclear fuel reprocessing, that the objective is to produce a pure uranium and a pure plutonium product stream. Now here at Sellafield, those materials are put into storage. And over time, one of the isotopes of plutonium, plutonium-241, decays into an isotope of americium, americium-241. And so over time, americium grows into these plutonium stocks. So it's possible to separate the americium from the plutonium by chemical methods. When it was first prepared, it was prepared because people predicted that these elements ought to be uh, synthesizable. 
It's just they didn't exist naturally. So of course this was a challenge to chemists. There's a little bit of interesting story uh, behind the, the synthesis of these elements because they were quite arduous, quite long-winded. A piece of plutonium was coated onto some platinum foil, oxidized to plutonium dioxide, put in a cyclotron. Once this was over with, they would take this foil and they would dissolve what they wanted away with concentrated nitric acid. And then they had to precipitate what they wanted as a hydroxide using an ammonium reagent and dissolved it in perchloric acid. Some curium was removed. You then had the americium. And the people who did this process found it so tedious and so arduous that they actually re referred to it as pandemonium, which is Greek for uh, all demons or hell. What is interesting is that americium is an element which may become more useful in the future. It may be able to replace plutonium in batteries for spacecraft and so on. So currently plutonium-238 is used, but to be able to generate that within Europe would require very expensive in infrastructure to be put into place, including a source of neptunium-237 generation, building a reactor specifically for converting neptunium into plutonium-238, and it all becomes very expensive. The production of Plut-238 stopped in the US uh, a number of decades ago, and they haven't uh, resumed production to this date. So stocks are running low. The European Space Agency would like to have an independent supply of these power sources. So they've commissioned a program of work to look at an alternative to plutonium-238. And it's possible that americium-241 could fulfill this role. Americium-241 doesn't produce the same amount of power, but it could be used in smaller applications. I don't like the names of elements that are named after countries because I feel chemistry is an international subject. Though I suppose that americium, although it's clearly derived from America, doesn't sound terribly like America, and therefore it's not bad as a name. And once something's got a name, it's difficult to change it, and everybody calls it americium, so we're stuck with it. Like that, and rotate it around. Nothing much happens. Oh, let me put it vertical. And it stays where it is.